I'm in Singapore today on vacation. If you're anything like me, when you think of this country, the first thing you think of is an urban metropolis. So I was shocked to hear that there is a mountain bike park here. Come with me as we check it out. I just rented this fine steed for $8. Can you believe that? The tires are bald. The fork is wallered out. The brakes don't do anything at all. It doesn't shift. It is awesome. With our review of the bike over, let's take a brief look at the history of the island while we ride. The island of Pulu Ubin was first commercially used in the early 1900s for German coffee plantations. The island was held briefly by the Japanese during World War II. Pulu Ubin in Malay translates to Granite Island. This famous painting from 1850 depicts the many granite outcroppings on the island. Following the end of World War II, several large granite quarries were opened. As people came to work the quarries, the island reached its peak population between 1950 and 1980, with 2,000 people living there at the time. Two schools were opened on the island. Today there are no schools, and only 50 residents remain there. There seems to be an effort from the government to move them off too. The current plan is to develop tourism and make the island a nature preserve. A few movies and TV shows have been made by a company in Singapore called Media Corporation that explores the island from the perspective of school children during the island's heyday. Kita Mountain Bike Park was opened in 2007 as a tourist attraction on the island. The small park that makes a loop around the quarry by the same name. On the map, they claim this trail is an intermediate trail. In my opinion, anywhere else in the world, this would be a beginner's trail. There was a small terrain park with a teeter-totter and some skinnies. I've seen this in Florida before. The supposed trail is just a strip of mowed grass. I think it's a testament to how verdant the landscape is. I think this is the only single track trail in the entire country of Singapore. The funny thing is it's closed to hikers. I was told if I get caught out here without a bicycle, I would get fined. The bicycle I'd rented was pretty unrideable, so I sulked back to the hotel and I was going to try it again the next day. Alright, yesterday I tried to do a ride out here, but the bicycle that I had rented was in pretty rough shape. Brakes didn't work, it wasn't going to be safe to do the ride. So I rented another bike today, it's, it's 29er. But I do like the rear tires completely bald. What kind of adjustment is that? The fork is frozen. But at least this one has brakes. So, 
It's better than the last one. No breaks on the last one. This is the halfway point on the loop. We're picking up today where I left off yesterday. If you're here, don't let the black diamond rating scare you off of these trails. Sure, there are a couple of expert features, but all of them have bypasses that let you keep your flow. In America, I think these would have been intermediate trails. I took some time to cruise around the other end of the island after completing a loop of the bike park. I enjoyed checking out the wildlife. I'm cruising through town here. There are a couple of restaurants, bike rentals, and a small store to pick up the essentials that you forgot when you came out here to camp. I love the sturdy and simple design of the boats they use to ferry materials over to the island. Caught up with the boat from earlier as they unloaded the landscaping supplies. This is a cool place. It's well worth checking out if you come to Singapore. <laughs> 